keyboard wasn't typing and I got really scared there for a minute. And then I realized I had turned it off to clean it. <laughs> so hi, Elizabeth, if you're watching this video later, we were talking about co-schedule and how we can streamline the blog publishing to social media announcement pipeline and workflow. And so Vinya is now providing a demo for us so we can better understand what the actual steps in this are. And that's what we're doing right now, what we're recording. Sure. So um, putting on a guy's face here. <laughs> um, so can everyone see my screen? Okay. Yep. 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 All right. So um, a little bit about this first. Uh, Co-schedule is like a hoot suite on steroids. Um, essentially, what you can do is you can make an entire blogging content and social media calendar all in one. So in prior meetings for the communications working group, we were trying to build a content and social media calendar in an Excel spreadsheet, and there was a lot of confusion with that. So I had recommended as a better replacement tool, CoSchedule. Um, Elizabeth was, uh, and I believe is, currently running a trial in order to check it out, see for herself how things are going to go. And there are four primary problems that CoSchedule largely solves. So the first one and most important is a security credentials issue for most of our social media. So because we're connecting LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook and Instagram, in addition to other social media channels uh, to co-schedule, uh, you don't need to provide the login information for each individual page. Likewise, uh, co-schedule itself also includes several features that allow you to publish several social posts, which leads us to the second one, integration with the WordPress website. Via API, we have the ability in co-schedule to create drafts for various blogs within the co-schedule platform. And Chaos already has the ability to uh, make a Google Drive document into a blog. And then this also works in reverse. Um, so I'm actually going to show that process to you now in order to uh, give you a better understanding of co-schedule in general. So what okay, we're going to do is we're just going to start with admin. Um, I'm sorry, uh, did you have a question? No, 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 go, go ahead. I do have a question, but go ahead if you're. Cool. So first and foremost is the team member setup, which allows us to create different accounts per member. And in so doing, we can make sure that there's a certain amount of security on the account. Um, then once we've developed that, we can connect a variety of different social profiles. You'll see that I have Facebook, two Instagram accounts, LinkedIn, and then two Twitter accounts here. We have the ability to connect a myriad of different systems. Um, once that is set up, we're more or less ready to operate CoSchedule. You'll see here that we have four different data types. So the first one is individual social posts. The second one is a task setup. So this allows us to allocate different tasks and it will email uh, the respective team member. Then we have a uh, actual social post and then we have the account user profiles that we'll be posting to. Each of those four can be found on the calendar setup. I'm showing you Socially Constructed itself. Uh, so you can see here that we have quite a few social posts posted. And uh, let's go ahead and go into the plus to create a blog post. When we create a blog post, we can create a new title. So we'll actually call this Chaos Demo. Um, once you have that scheduled, if you click on more options, we also have the ability to add tags. So I'm going to add a blog tag and then say, this is showing chaos. Whoops, I'm terribly sorry. This is showing chaos. The We take no offense. Co-schedule demo. Once you've created that project, you also have the ability to move it into WordPress if you'd like. You can connect to Google Doc in order to collect the information. Um, and once you've connected this Google Doc, you can ask it to move that Google Doc into WordPress. So let's select that and then add a Google Doc attachment opening Google Docs. So Vinya, is this if someone says, here's a blog post written in Google Doc, 
This is the doc we link to? Yes, correct. So you'll see that we have a add attachment option to select a Google Doc. And when this is finished, let's let's pretend that this is an actual article. Once you've saved it, it'll actually ask you, great, now where do you want to send it? Um, we, I, It'll be difficult for me to show you that right now, but you'll see this convert to WordPress button. And it'll ask you, this process will convert the selected attachment to a WordPress blog. So if we click continue, you can see that it's pulled to the category system from my account. And let's say that this is about marketing. And let's say the author is me. And we'll go ahead and convert that. And then if we pop into the back end of the WordPress account, give it a quick refresh just to make sure um, things are pulled. And then we hop into the post section. You'll see here that we have a chaos demo available. Let's go ahead and edit that. And because it's coming from a Google Doc, currently the Google Doc is empty, so the information will be empty. But you'll see here, type slash choose a block. It will all have transferred into a traditional um, Gutenberg style uh, text box that goes here. And then you'll set up your Yoast SEO, you'll create the post, you'll add the featured image. And then down here, you'll see um, across several uh, widgets, we also have a co-schedule widget. So in the co-schedule widget, there are two main parts to this. Uh, so the first one is using Analyze in order to determine the uh, actual title of the blog. So you can optimize the title for not just SEO, but also social media. You can see that our headline score is currently a 31. And it'll actually give uh, the person advice. So this allows engineers to do a little bit of marketing jobs if they want to. Um, this is totally skippable. Uh, the more important part in this is going to be uh, accessing the calendar and pushing social posts. Um, so I have a question, Vinya. So yeah. on that, so here you have shown that you can attach to an existing, like prior to this, you've shown that you can attach to an existing blog post that's written in Google Docs mm -hmm. and bring it forward into the WordPress site and ultimately the ultimately the web page. And so then go back to your, yeah, there. So then on the right, right hand side, fully right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So th this is where you start setting up what the post is, the social post is going to look like. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So okay. this information is basically metadata that gets added to the WordPress blog. Um, so categories are a really important part of the WordPress blog because that's going to generate the ability for you to contextually organize your content around certain types. So you could have one for chaos metrics. And I've recommended a few of these already to the uh, WordPress page. And then in addition okay. to that, you have the ability to add tags. So let's say this is about qualitative data. It mentions chaos and it's qualitative data for tech and tools. So you can add these tags and then it allows it to become searchable both on the back end, front end. Yeah, um, you... where if I wanted to have customize the social posts, where do I do that in here? Yep. Um, so you'll see here underneath the uh, social media planner that we don't just have an analyze system. We also have the ability for you to add anything that you would like. Um, Perhaps it would make sense to, yeah, let's do that because we're working on a system that is incomplete here. Since it doesn't currently have a URL, it's not showing, but let's click on the Google Analytics 4 one. So this one has a established URL. It's been saved as a real content blog. So CoSchedule has the ability to pull information. Um, the main reason it wasn't showing for the last one is because it doesn't have a URL um, associated with it just yet. But if we scroll down to the end, you'll see that I actually have the analyze post, but you'll also see that it's now pulled in a URL. And I can create a social media template if I want to. So this blog post announcement, we can go ahead and use this template. And let's say on the same day, you want to say uh, new blog out on the chaos community website. 
And then you can say, Georg was gracious enough to give us a back and look at the, the Persia and Chaos shared software grimoire lab. And then you can see that it also associates a permalink there. And then you can add that and it can go live on Facebook and Twitter. And then let's just add a random image. So Google Drive, shared drive, internal content. You still have a question, Gary? Your hand is still raised. I'll lower it. So now we're adding the how this is done. Yeah, this is great. So now we add the Grimoire Labs, and then you can see in a preview, this is how it will look on Facebook, and this is how it will look on Twitter. Um, you can also analyze that post, and it'll give you a content overall score. So sentiment is positive. It looks like it's a bit high on the character count. It's got 68% for the overall score. And then on Twitter, that higher character count actually hurts us worse. Um, but because it's an image, it, it stands a high likelihood of being scored. So once you've set this up and you hop into the social media calendar, there's one other last feature that I want to mention, which is super, super critical. Um, you'll remember I said that there are four file types, but I didn't actually give you the fourth. The fourth, if you'll see here, the chaos demo just came in as a draft, and we'll have a series of different uh, social posts here. If we click into one, you'll see that there's a draft pending review and scheduled. If we set it to pending review, then Elizabeth can come in here. Uh, you'll see here that there's one particular pending review item for this message cannot be published. Um, she can come in here and verify that everything is correct or viable. And then one of the other things that she can do when you click in is you can make an evergreen social post. So with this, you have this requeue option and you basically make a series of lists. So the chaos cast Tuesday, and then you can say this information will expire after five times, or you can leave it to never expire at all. Where those end up living is here in the requeue menu. And you can see that I have one going out for every day in the week, in addition to promotional and general content. And uh, because it's just basically a giant list, you can now go through here periodically in order to audit all of your social media posts. And if you click on the kebab link, you can see duplicate or archive. Archive basically takes it off of the list and places it in here. And if you want to actually see it, you can under active, you can actually ask to see the post. Let me actually show that to you on calendar. This will make the most sense. So under calendar, uh, let's select a post that was already posted. So this post is here, and then you can see edit in group for the requeue, or you can actually view the post um, where it will take you to the Facebook area and you can start collecting information from it. So I have a couple of comments because we're getting close to time. Mm -hmm. um, so one is the calendar, from what I understand, the calendar is a way for you to see what has been done and what will be done, what is scheduled to be done in the future. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And then I think, so I, I really like what, what I see here, um, and it makes a ton of sense to me. It, I think the start would probably be just working to get the blog posts out via this on, onto social, like, like just get that rhythm down would be my guess. And like you're, Venya, you're like super like awesome at all this stuff and way advanced. And my guess is, is that like for us and maybe we, and I hope we can get there, but like the first is just to get comfortable with getting, for example, the blog posts or the podcast or something like that out to, to social and kind of getting that rhythm down would be amazing. Yeah. Um, um, 
I agree. Um, I I have a very advanced implementation, and since yeah. Chaos's uh, process for blogs is pretty definite, um, I think that starting with the blog system makes the most sense because this is going to okay. save the WordPress team a lot of time. And that's yeah. why I strongly recommend having a web representative yeah. join the communications working group. So then another, and both mostly just so you know, to Venya, the we have a the web content group. They kind of meet asynchronously now, and if we talk about web things like in a meeting, it's mostly during the common working group call right now, which is, it's actually two minutes on this channel. And then it's every two weeks, you know, like Thursdays, you know, kind of every two weeks, just so you know. Yeah. Um, and then the other question is, does this have a cost associated with it? And that's not a hesitation. I'm just curious. Um, yeah, it is a cost uh, focused platform, but um, okay. I don't necessarily see a problem with uh, looking to sponsor the use of the platform. It's also got a nonprofit end to it. Um, okay. I mean, we have funds to pay for things like this. So that's, I'm not, that's okay. I'm just, do you know how much it costs? Is it by a month or is it by like, do you do a subscription? Uh, as I understand it, it's a tiered based subscription. Okay. Uh, Again, just totally curious. Yeah, there is a free version to it, uh, which is handy. Okay. Um, so gotcha. as I understand it, Elizabeth has already spun up a free version to test it. Okay. Um, but other than that, like the pro marketing calendar, oh. I'm paying uh, $29 per month on an annual plan. Um, okay. That's if you switch to monthly, I think it's 35 per month. But okay. um, yeah, it, totally it's fun. not expensive at all. Um, no, it doesn't look expensive. Okay, this is really great. I um, I think we're going to have to drop off just because we have another meeting starting right now. But this is super helpful. Um, and I'll connect with Elizabeth. And I think here's, here's Kevin for the other meeting. So why, why don't we say goodbye to this one? I'm going to stop the recording. The recording.